the liver is an unusual organ in that it receives inflow. So blood coming into the liver is both from an artery and from a vein. So most organs in the body, an artery brings in fresh blood and a vein removes uh, old blood. In the liver, fresh blood and, old, and vena, blood from the artery and blood from the vein, both considered fresh blood, are brought into the liver. 75% of that inflow is actually from the vein. In the setting where that vein is clotted, the blood flow into the liver, it meets a pressure head, meets a obstruction to flow. And that creates high pressure in the, in the structures on the other side of the obstruction. Um, the result of that is uh, babies develop very large spleens. They develop swelling in the intestine uh, where they may not absorb calories well. The large spleen traps platelets and red cells and other elements in the blood and uh, can lead to uh, issues with uh, or it becomes a cause of bleeding that occurs as there's, uh, as there's accessory blood flow or as the body attempts to bypass the obstruction. Um, there is a surgical solution to this problem. That vein cannot just be opened up. That vein is clotted. Usually the clots and the causes can be a number of things. It could be a, de a severe dehydration episode, trauma to that vein. The baby may have an underlying clotting disorder. Some of, the, some of them run in families. It may be a result of the liver being injured. Um, itself and causing uh, fibrosis in that liver will cause, uh, cause poor flow. Some babies that are born premature who have, um, who have a, uh, a catheter in their umbilical vein or the vein in their belly button uh, can have injury to that vein and it can clot. So the causes are many. Um, one of the solutions is to do what's called a meso, uh, cable, a meso, excuse me, meso portal shunt, which is known as the rex shunt. The rex shunt is the most complete solution to the problem. It requires finding the portal vein inside the liver, which is often still open in patients with portal vein thrombosis. Mesorex shunt uh, is the shunt to connect um, the mesenteric vein to the portal vein inside of the liver. Typical area that we access to the liver is the left side of the portal vein. That area is called the rex um, diverticulum of the portal vein. That's why we call it mesorex shunt. Um, typically, we use the neck vein for the interpositional graft. Um, it is the uh, lowest thrombosis rate uh, to use your own neck vein. Uh, the harvesting the neck vein may sound awful, but it is a standard procedure. It's been used for a long time in the surgical procedures, in vascular surgeries. The procedure can take uh, three hours to five hours. Uh, the neck vein harvesting time is included, but the neck vein harvesting time to take in the neck vein, um, it could take a little longer time and altogether procedure um, can be up to six hours. Once the shunt is successful, the flow to the liver is restored the child doesn't need anything else. That can be the permanent fix of the problem. Mesorex shunt is a complicated surgery. It has to be done by an um, expert team who is experienced in the vascular surgery and the liver anatomy. Post-operative complication includes uh, post-operative bleeding. And an infection, as always in the case in any um, surgery, the complication specific to, specific to the shunt surgery is a thrombosis of the graft, meaning that the blood clot formation inside the shunt. Um, that can be taken care of by the interventional radiology procedure when that happened and caught earlier. So after a successful Rex shunt, uh, you know, the, the usual things that are done is we monitor um, that the shunt remains open that we often will use blood thinners for a short period of time until the shunt has a chance to heal since it's a new surgery. Um, we also monitor the size of the liver and the spleen. We expect the liver to increase in size because the blood flow to the liver is, makes the liver more healthy, and we expect the spleen to decrease in size. 
Other signs that the patient is doing well, the things that we follow, would be uh, the change in the blood counts. So the things that were the elements of blood that were being trapped in the spleen would no longer be trapped in the spleen. And the veins that they have developed, usually in the esophagus or the upper part of the stomach, uh, can be examined by endoscopy to ensure that they have resolved. So there's a number of ways that we can demonstrate that a shunt is, is effectively doing its job. A child with portal vein thrombosis may be having learning difficulties. A child psychiatrist, a child neurobehaviorist may have to be involved to evaluate the problem. Child life may be involved in evaluating the impairment of the activities of daily living and the stresses on the family. Child psychiatrists may be involved to evaluate family dynamics and their ability to cope with the problem. Our hepatologists are very familiar with this rare disorder and uh, know how to counsel the patients, how to evaluate the patients, how to look for other medical complications which may along, go along with this disorder. Finally, my own interest in this disease goes back 25 to 30 years. And I have performed more of these operations than almost anyone in the world. So with this in mind, uh, our ability to care for the patient with this rare but complex disorder is exceptional. And we would uh, counsel families to look for a center that has the multidisciplinary expertise to evaluate and treat this problem.